Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Osmo.com GPP Core presented by No House Advantage. <clears throat> I'm going to be building three lineups for DraftKings today uh, for Thanksgiving. Really uh, interesting slate where we got uh, the first game, the Bears and Lions, two really bad offenses. But in a three game slate, pretty much anything can happen. Uh, the first uh, stack I'll make is the Josh Allen stack. That's our chalk stack. <laughs> highest percentage chance to perform this week because Buffalo passes at a high rate and effectively Saints defense is a, a negative but still not enough to really make me worried I'm going to stack him up <clears throat> with uh, Stefan Diggs and uh, you could go with Sanders Beasley or, or Knox those would probably be the best options um, I don't have a very strong lean here but uh, let's go with Sanders and then the run back is really not a necessity this week however on the Saints if Ing if uh, Kamara misses this week Ingram will be a really good play the reason I'm not really <clears throat> focusing on run backs is because on a six game slate or three game slate six teams you don't really need your stack to go bananas so let's get into running back uh, Ezekiel Elliott is kind of the chalk play. DeAndre Swift also looking pretty popular. And then David Montgomery is probably my, my top play of the week. I think the, the switch to Andy Dalton is really going to benefit him. <laughs> He's getting targeted more. And I'll want to have one of the running backs uh, in this Raiders-Cowboys game because I don't really want opposing running backs in the same game. That's not a good correlation, so... Since my lineup is getting pretty chalky, I'll go with Jacobs. I feel like he's the less popular between him and Zeke. Zeke is questionable this week, so I'll we'll have to keep an eye on that. Now I really need a dart throw play. One guy that we could consider is Deshaun Jackson. Now he, uh, his own, I guess his ownership went up since I, uh, since I did this because. Okay, so Khalif Raymond is also an option. He's the wide receiver one on Detroit. So I think the the volume is secure. They just don't throw at a high rate. But we really need someone to give us some sort of differentiation from the field. And the same with uh, the Saints. They don't pass a lot, but Adam Troutman is on the IR now, so Juwan Johnson is their passing, pass catching tight end. So I think uh, he's an intriguing play this week. Now, as far as defense, um, I guess I could go with the Raiders defense. Dallas is going to be pretty popular this week. So if I'm betting against Dallas, and right now I have a full team fade, then I uh, Going with the uh, with the Raiders D kind of makes sense. The only problem is right now Zeke is kind of the the guy that completes this lineup. So <clears throat> maybe um, yeah, there's like no one high price this week because <clears throat> you have um. Dallas's receivers most likely out, so maybe I'll throw in Swift. It's not a great correlation, but both catch passes, so I can live with that. All right, lineup two, Derek Carr. Now versus Dallas, they should have to throw a lot. They are a pretty, pretty neutral team, run pass. Dallas is the one stadium that has a retractable roof. The others are domes in this slate, so... We'll have to see if the roof's open or closed. That could make a, a slight difference in the outlook for this game. But um, I think Carr is a great option, and sacking him up, <clears throat> Waller or Renfro would probably be the safest options. I'm only going to go with one of the two. So I feel like uh, Renfro is a good option. And then Zay Jones and Deshaun Jackson are kind of the contrary in plays. Both have been playing a lot. Zay Jones, I thought, would get a downtick in run, uh, routes with Deshaun Jackson on the team, but that hasn't been the case so far. So 
let's slide in Zay Jones. I'll give us a little bit of differentiation. And I do want to have a lineup where I'm expecting Dallas to, to do pretty well uh, to keep Vegas passing. So let's, uh, let's go with one of their receivers. I guess Michael Gallup with uh, Cooper out and um, CD Lamb uh, unlikely to play is uh, going to get a nice workload there. Actually, maybe I'll go with the tight end, Schultz. He's gotten a nice uh, workload recently as well. Um, <clears throat> for running back, let's go with Swift in this one. With Jamal Williams back, uh, that does affect the outlook a little bit, but it seems like, uh, I mean, he proved last week that he has a big upside. Uh, one thing I'll mention is on no house advantage, you can bet these props. You basically make a DFS lineup of props and Swift's line is only 55 rushing yards. I feel like people aren't giving Detroit credit enough for being such a run heavy team. Uh, so I think Swift could easily eclipse that. And uh, the way it works, you can get a promo code 25 bucks using Osmo. You build a lineup with several different props and you rank them in confidence. And then it scored just like a DFS contest. So a lot of fun and no house advantage. All right. So uh, let's, uh, let's go to this Bills Saints game. I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. I can go with some, some pretty conventional plays. So Diggs, I think, is going to be a obvious play. Uh, actually, the line I know has advantage is seven and a half reception. So I took the under there. But still, I think the outlook in DFS is very good. Uh, I'll go with Detroit's defense. Andy Dalton is kind of uh, iffy, and uh, Detroit's defense gives you a little bit of value. For uh, running back, I'll go with uh, David Montgomery. I know that correlation between Swift and Montgomery, and then the Lions' defense isn't great, but I'm projecting a lot more passes to running back this week from the Bears. So I think that Montgomery can pile up a pretty good workload, even if um, if <clears throat> uh, the Lions defense gets a turnover for a touchdown or something like that. And the Lions going to be a lot less likely to be duped. And then for my final pick, it looks like Mark Ingram slots in nicely here. Um, but that is showing my leverage as being pretty negative. So maybe I have to go to a, uh, a contrarian play. I think that TJ Hawkinson should be pretty unpopular. Um, but that really boosted my contrarian ranking in the lineup builder. So I just leave 1400 on the table. Not the end of the world here. <clears throat> Basically, my win condition is Swift and Montgomery outscore Zeke. Because uh, otherwise I could upgrade Swift to, to Zeke. So, all right, lineup three, Andy Dalton. I think that um, this game is in a dome and the Detroit Lions are really bad on defense. So regardless of how you feel about Dalton, the spot could be pretty good. And uh, one guy I'm looking at this week is Cole Komet. He's getting a lot of routes. Uh, and, uh, I mean... Actually, the Detroit Lions are supposedly strong against the tight end, so maybe that drives down the ownership, but I don't really see that as uh, actually being a real factor. Um, I have a hard time believing that. All right, <clears throat> David Montgomery is one of my top plays of the week, and I think uh, it's easy to see this uh, getting there because... Komet doesn't have to put up like 40. He just needs to ask through their tight ends. Maybe in this one, I'll go with Zeke. He's kind of the chalk play. Great spot as a big favorite versus the Raiders. And at wide receiver, uh, this is kind of interesting. I guess I could stack up a Bears wide receiver, but I already have two players in the Bears. Going to three isn't bad, but then I'd want to really consider running it back with some guys that I'm not super keen on. <laughs> I guess I can go with some, uh, <clears throat> I'll go with one sleeper here, Noah Brown. He's, uh, he got a lot more action 
when C.D. Lamb was out last game, so I'm anticipating he'll play a lot this week. I don't think most people will be on him because he didn't really show up in the box score very much last week. For a wide receiver, Diggs might be a necessity again just because I got to spend the money. Um, and you just need him to be one of the top three scoring wide receivers. We have that the chance that he's in the optimal lineup at about 40%. So those are pretty good odds. And then maybe I'll go with, uh, I haven't talked a lot about the, the Saints receivers, but Mark has Callaway. He's kind of pricey and uh, not that popular, but he has been running a ton of routes, uh, which the opportunity is there is just kind of like, is New Orleans going to have any success passing the ball? Uh, but in the GPP, I'm willing to take some chances here. At defense, let's go with uh, let's go with the Bears. The I'm kind of uh, hoping with this lineup that uh, Chicago dominates the time of possession, and I think that people don't really like stacking up the defense with their quarterback. However, this is a three-game slate, so I'm not needing Chicago to go out and uh, put up records. I just need them to get the highest on the slate. So getting some red zone turnovers will definitely help that. And then I got one more play left, 7,900. I don't really want to go to Swift because I already have uh, the defense against him. Let's see. I did completely fade the Raiders here. So I guess the, the chalk would be you go to, to Mark Ingram. He's the most likely to succeed uh, if the Camara is indeed out. And this lineup, a little bit less projection-wise, but did a really good job with the contrarian ranking, more contrary than 80% of lineups that we're anticipating will be in the field. So, guys, I hope this gave you some insight for how to build some lineups for the Thanksgiving slate. Should be a lot of fun. And make sure to check out No House Advantage. $25 match bonus with the promo code Osimo. Good luck this week.